Hey, um, I'm going to post about this subject again because um, apparently people aren't getting it. So maybe if I post it enough and some other person will copy me and, you know, put it out there. I don't care as long as, uh, you know, people get the message that um, Pombajira is not this singular um, entity or this singular deity. Um, a lot of people are confusing her with Nkisi. A lot of people are confusing her with, um, and I say her, and, and even that's misguided because Pamajir is a group of spirits. So um, they're confusing them with um, Arisha. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, it's like some of the stuff I'm reading lately on Tumblr and Instagram, and you know people are. You know, it's cool. People make candles, they make statues, whatever. I love artistic expression, but um, sometimes people have to understand that if you're doing art art based on real spirits and real spirituality, that you have to do your research and you have to know what you're talking about. Because um, when you're just selling things to people and you're telling them the incorrect information, then they can end up calling down something that they do not want to work with they don't need to work with and you have and then you have something they think they're working with something and then it's something else masquerading is that and it is very um common that's why they're called kiombas they're um spirits or demons that or even ghosts who will masquerade themselves as a pambajir or an eshu and then People have been giving all this energy and prayer and even sacrifices to these entities, and it's not what they think it is, and then it causes a lot of problems. And when it's time for them, if they ever do find a Tehera where they can, you know, incorporate these entities, it's a Kiamba, and so it's almost like a demonic possession instead of what it's really supposed to be. So this is why I'm telling you, you know, I'm talking so much about this because I've had a bad experience with that with Kiomba's, um, working with some other houses in the United States, and it's completely different in a lot of the houses in Brazil, it's not because, like, some people act like Umbanda is, like, this cherry, co like, it's, like, vanilla version of Kimbanda, and it is true, there are some Tejeros who want to whitewash some of it, and then, but most of the Tejeros that I, that I've been to and I talked to in Brazil, they don't. They still have a very strong um, view of um, issues, a very v strong view of Umbanda, and they know that it comes from their African spirits. They're, well, to a certain degree. So, you know, Caboclos obviously aren't African spirits. They're indigenous or mestizo um, mixed Brazilian people. Um, but when you come to, like, Palmeiras, issues. Um, occasionally you'll have some that are from Iberian, they're from Europe, but as you know, people are not as white as people like to think they are in Europe. There were Africans there, there were Moors there for over 700 years, so just because someone is from Europe doesn't mean they're white. Um, just because they're from Portugal or Iberia from, you know, 14, 1500s doesn't mean that they were white. Um, a lot of times they weren't white. They were very dark. So um, it's just kind of, you know, a lot of people are just mixing a whole bunch of things. And there's a little bit of the racism coming in with and colorism. But it's, you know, what what it is is that if you have a Pomagira, your Pomagira is like her life story is not going to be online at all. Because every Pomagira has a different story. These are just titles to help you classify them. They they help you um, figure out what their offerings are, what are their punto mescalos, punto cantados, um, things that um, help bring that energy down. But at the end of the day, that's not really their names. I mean, it could have person could have been named, you know, Sophia, but you know, as a spirit, she decides to be called Maria Pagia or Maria Malombo or Maria Navalia or Palmajira Sagana or all these other different. Um, Meridia Keteria, like, it's, it's like all these different Pomagiras that the spirit can, um, use, because they're just a spirit now, but living had a different name, so, yeah, you can share it, um, and I'm probably gonna put it on YouTube, or 
whatever I can put on Instagram. Um, so that's really what's going on. They're different spirit guides and some people have them, some people don't. And what I, 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 I'm starting to see is that, <sighs> yes, um, you know, through the slave trade, there's been a lot of Congo, a lot of, even some people have Portuguese ancestry in the United States and a lot of people don't understand why that is. It's funny because some Brazilians don't understand why that is because this is not taught as much that, um, the Portuguese were integral to the, like two main groups were integral to the entire Atlantic slave trade of getting it boot, um, started, the Arabs and the Portuguese. The Portuguese were the first ones who actually went into Central Africa and had a major port there. And after Brazil actually, and you know, two thirds of the slaves were came from Angola, but, and they maintained that relationship with Angola as well as other places. But after Brazil became independent of Portugal, um, they still brought slaves over from, you know, from Angola and they still had, um, trade in other parts in Africa, like Benin, like Togo, like Ghana, even Nigeria. So, um, you had the colonists had slaves and then the new colonies also had slaves, just like the United States had slaves. So, um, they're involved in the trade as well. So you have a lot of different, you know, groups coming together and some of those groups coalesced into the Caribbean and from the Caribbean went into the United States. So you have people who are African American who have a whole bunch of mixtures from a lot of different places in Africa. And, you know, people just think African, you know, ancestors don't give a shit about these political, like, um, these newer political denominations that we all like to stick or, um, you know, they're tribal. So even in Africa, so when, you know, people come for spiritual readings or ancestor work or whatever, that spirit's telling you where they're from, what tribe they're from. They're not talking about, oh, well, I'm from this country and whatever its name is now, when the name's been changed like three or four or five times in the past century, they, you know, I mean, they don't care about that. We care about that more. Like if you have, like, like I had this discussion about, um, even Lawa in 21 Divisions versus Haiti. Um, and they say, oh, well, at least Lawa speaks Spanish. Well, you, you do know that the original language of Hispaniola was Spanish before the French came. So if some of these Lawa speak Spanish, they're probably a little bit older than some of the ones we, we work with in, a, in La Sagua lineage from Haiti. Or they might be from the country. So... You know, just because they speak Spanish doesn't mean it's like Dominican. They might, there's a lot of them actually come from the Haiti side, but they, you know, they're a little bit older and some of them have been forgotten. So they speak Spanish. Um, but it's the same thing with Brazil over here. Um, you'll have Pomagir. Some of them do speak Spanish or Catalan or Basque or some um, type of language, which is hard to understand. Or some of them speak African languages and they don't talk so much in possession. And that's just because no one really understand them. Um, the ones who really talk speak pretty good Portuguese. And you can probably judge um, where they're from. They, you know, they're probably from Angola or they're probably from, they're, you know, we're Brazilian citizens um, when they were living. Um, so, yeah. This whole Pomagira is this like deity or this red queen bullshit or all that stuff. It make it sells a lot of good books. It sells a lot of good books, especially to the people who are used to working with Goetia and ceremonial magic and all this other stuff. But it it's not true. Like you can't just get a statue and gain a Pomagira. You either have one or you don't. Sometimes you can gain one by being in a house for a long time. Has happened. I think when I was in Brazil, I picked up a Calveira, but that's not my main from my godfather because he he doesn't mount his Tata Calveira anymore. And there was another Tata Calveira, and I was at a Jira, and he put this um, ring, took his ring off the medium's finger and put it on my finger. And then the rest of the night, they were talking about my Calveira that I had, which I had never heard about. I knew I had one, but the way they described it was kind of disturbing uh, so it looked kind of the way they described it was more like zombie kind of looking caveta but 
Um, where, like, it literally had a skull face, like, the meat was falling off kind of thing. Um, but, so, it is possible to pick up one. It is possible, but it happens very rarely. And it definitely doesn't happen from Palo. It doesn't have, like, that's the other thing. People think they're initiating Palo and they start working Kimbanda. It's not the same thing. Kimbanda is not always, the, it's not considered the left hand stuff. I mean, yeah, you can ha- get into some things that are more witchcraft, but it's not the same. Um, it's just working with quote unquote lower types of spirits. And when they say lower, they're talking about vibration. Just because something's African doesn't mean, and people say lower vibration, they get kind of, um, start pulling out the racism card and all this other stuff. It's from a spiritual point of view, it's not about, it's, I, I'll talk about it from vibration. It's not just because they're African and they smoke cigarettes and, or they smoke cigars or they drink water, they drink alcohol, that they're lower spirit. No, it's how they act. It's how the energy is. Um, and just experience with different other spirits, Numbanda and, um, Orisha, Bodun, stuff. We all know, anyone who's practiced Haitian voodoo know that the Petro Lawa are a little bit darker, they're a little bit heavier energy than the Rada Lawa. Like, they're a little bit cooler. They all have their different sides. Everyone, every spirit can have a good side or bad side or can be pushed to as a negative side, but um, it's about vibration, like vibration, just like people. Some people have a higher vibration or higher energy than other ones. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about just because something's more African or more Congo that everything's lower energy. They're talking about the Ashes and Pomagiris are closer to us. So they have more of a um, mannerism or behavior like us, like the mediums, like the humans. So they are going to smoke. They are going to drink. They are going to gossip. They are going to make fun of people, they are, they're very, um, quite similar to Gede and Haitian Vodou, where they dance around and be very sexual, and, um, you know, be, um, uncouth, if you will, and, but they have a purpose, they're usually doing stuff, they're playing the, this clown act, but they're usually doing healing work and other stuff, or getting rid of negativity, and that's exactly what Eshin and Pomagiris do as well, they do get rid of negativity, um, they tend to like block stuff that comes in to the Tejero from outside where people are like putting stuff on the house. They'll, they'll come down and discharge it or they will, um, someone has a negative entity, they'll get rid of it. Like the possessed issue will, li- I've seen them literally drag people across the Tejero and they're like possessed with this Kiomba spirit and they're screaming and writhing and stuff and they'll literally drag them across the Tejero into the room and get rid of it. Um, or discharge, negativity, sickness, that type of stuff. So um, even though they're quote-unquote lower vibration, sometimes they're the most helpful and um, because they're able to work both ways, I guess. Um, the lower vibration you are, the more likely you are to work for the darker stuff because that's just the way it is. The darker stuff is a lower vibration than um, the higher stuff. So you... You have, and then that's why they talk about when even from not even biblical, but we all get into the Abrahamic stuff. When they talk about, you know, angels, angels do a whole bunch of stuff, but angels originally made from light. So their vibration is very high. And when they start working more with us and doing stuff that's not so great, then they quote unquote fall. So it's not, it's more about the rising and falling. It's about vibration and frequency that they work with, that they're, um, body is it's not so much of uh um classes or colorists or races or that type of stuff it's like vibration of energy the more that you that you work on a higher level frequency those spirits will do mostly healings come down to do um works consults stuff like that they won't be doing so much of the witchcraft stuff or the but you need a balance because you have you need spirits for defense, you need spirits for offense. So, um, yeah, if you need for offense stuff, you will go to an issue. You go to your issue, and when people say you go to issue, they don't understand that if they don't have one, 
They don't have one of these spirits. They're using the spirits of their Baba or someone that they know. So they're using the spirits of the house. So it's not just, it's not really a solitary thing if you don't have one. If you don't have any Eshes and Pomagers, you can get all the statues you want. You can kill goats and everything you want. But it's not really going to do anything because you don't have that spirit with you. So what are you feeding? Usually you end up attracting something else and, and cause all types of problems. And that's what I'm, that's what I've said earlier, that if you don't know what you're doing, especially with that wonderful, we have this wonderful imagery that's kind of, um, you know, um, you, you know, any type of spirit can just sit his ass in that statue and you have no idea because you, if you're not a good spiritualist and you don't have experience, even if you're a great spiritualist, if you have no experience in these type of spirits from Brazil or these or with congressmen, you have no idea what you're looking at. There's plenty of great psychics and spirit and mediums who, if you're not exposed to a specific group of spirits, you have no clue how to uh, how to discern between what's an Eshu, what's a Kiomba, which is a straight up demon, what is something from Galatia. You wouldn't have no idea because some Eshus, their the way they possess, can come off that way. They do hiss. They some do, you know, laugh really maniacally. Some do um make you know, make people go on convulsions, especially when you know, some women have issues. So when women have issues, they can sound really scary because their voice will drop, they'll start hissing, um, they'll have their hands in like claw configurations, sometimes in front of them, sometimes behind their back, sometimes they'll be doing some other crazy shit. So it, it you know, if you don't not used to it, or if you're just even like a nurse, you would scare the shit out of a Christian. I'll put it that way. Like you would think, you know, you're in an exorcist movie sometimes with some issues because some of them can be a um, little off, off the chain and some of them can be kind of dark. I had a client where he had one that was a Eshu de Lodo. Like it's very, he showed himself as a, like a bald African, dark, really, really, really dark skinned man, but his energy was really heavy to the point where after I finished the reading, I had to clean myself. That's how heavy the energy was. And he has that around him naturally. So he has to do things to kind of brighten up and uplift that spirit. So it's not so, you know, dragging things down. Because the Lodo means like from the mud. So it means like it drags things, negativity to the earth. So... Yeah, if you don't know what you're doing in this tradition, um, don't be so quick to to get a statue or burn a candle for Pomagir. And please, 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 if people are telling you that they got to cut you, scratch you, whatever, put a Pomagir on your head, run away. Because that's not done in Brazil. I mean, I spent a good, like, couple weeks going to different <laughs> botanicas and even asking questions like that or you know, like in Sao Paulo and then, you know, talking to my friends in Rio and stuff. I've been talking to friends and people in Brazil for years, but when I actually went there, I went to different shops in Sao Paulo and I, anytime they worked with Umbanda or Eshus, I would sit, I would, you know, have conversations with them about that and they would just start laughing because they're, like, scratched. Scratch the Kimbanda. Like they would literally start busting out laughing at me when I brought it up. Um, they're like, what are you crazy Americans doing? And they don't know who, you know, the, you see the author of some of these Eshu books in English and Pomagier books. I started throwing names around. They didn't know who the fuck he was like at all. And he lives in Brazil. They still didn't know who he was. So most of these books are not published in Portuguese and Portuguese people do not know who he is it's purely being published for the European and English audiences and it's kind of funny it's kind of funny but yeah I'll just finish saying Pomagir is not a singular entity Pomagir is not a goddess Pomagir is not one person (laughs) it's a group of entities and they're all different and if you have one it's an interesting experience because they can be needy um if you're a medium they 
you know, if you go to Azure, they might try to come down on certain occasions. So you have to, if you do have one, you have to um, kind of manage them so that they're not, you kind of uplift them and they're not dragging you down because there are kind of lower spirits and sometimes they can, you know, influence you with certain things. Um, I have a couple issues that are not so light, <laughs> I will say. Um, one of them is Eshu Morsego, and that's not um, very a light issue. And yeah, I'll be open to anyone who wants to speak to me about this stuff. Just um, you can text message me or message me on Facebook or YouTube or um, instant message, DM, whatever. Um, when I have the time, I'll, you know, talk about it. Um, yeah. Oh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.